This is Rise. Let's lock in with the goal of changing one life at a time, yours. Together, let us rise up, inspire, strengthen, and elevate our minds. It's time to rise on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, my name is Dr. Saren Heron, and welcome to Rise. Today, we are going to talk about setting good goals today for a better future. My guest today is Dr. Winifred Bragg, who obtained her undergraduate degree from the University of Alabama, her medical degree from Mahari Medical College, and completed her internship at the Baptist Medical Centers in Birmingham. She completed her residency training at the University of Michigan. She is a double board certified physician, CEO of Spine and Orthopedic Pain Center in Norfolk in Virginia, and the creator of the Bragg Factor. The Bragg Factor is a system that teaches students, entrepreneurs, and other professionals how to own and communicate their value. Dr. Bragg is an expert in providing non-surgical treatment for injuries and pain resulting from spinal and orthopedics conditions. She has written a four-part bestseller series on the Bragg Factor, which includes Dreams Without Goals or Nightmares, How to Create a Bragg Book, for a competitive job market for college students and how to create a brag book for the job market for professionals. She's a national recognized speaker, has appeared on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox and other platforms. She is here to talk about the importance of setting goals, share the brag factor, and teach you to embrace your value. Dr. Winifred, welcome to Rise here on The Voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHBC. Thank you, Dr. Haran, for having me tonight. Wonderful. Now, you are a medical doctor and you provide non-surgical treatments for injuries, spinal and orthopedics conditions. Speak to us about that. Well, I'm an interventional pain uh, specialist. So what that means is when people have an orthopedic or problem or like back pain, neck pain, oftentimes people seek out an orthopedic surgeon because they are and let me have surgery. So I specialize in non-surgical treatment of those problems. So actually what people don't know, you could come to someone like me first before you go to the orthopedic surgeon to do what we call non-surgical or conservative management. Because what we know as it relates to back pain, 80% of people are going to have back pain by age 55. And usually 90% of back pain can be resolved non-surgically. Wow, that's an interesting Yeah, In the United States, surgery on the back is done at twice the rate of surgery in other countries. So knowledge is always power. So you want to seek, just like if any other thing, you went to a GYN or Mm. a cardiologist, your first thought would not be, can I have surgery for this doctor? You want to know what can I do from a conservative standpoint. So my specialty for that is called physical medicine and rehabilitation. And so you would look for a physical medicine rehabilitation doctor or an interventional pain doctor to uh, treat you. Wonderful. Now, why did you decide to become a medical doctor? I'm interested to, to know. Well, I've always been interested in science. I'm a gardener. I've always had a gardener, uh, a garden. And when I was young, my father used to see me talking to plants outside, <laughs> he used to say, well, what are you going to do? Be a, a, a plant a doctor or what are you going to do? And so I was uh, always interested in science. And at first I was interested in becoming a dentist because dental school was shorter than the medical school route. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was always interested in health because I wanted to see what impact I could have on the lives of others in a helpful and meaningful way. Now, our college students who may be listening and may be considering becoming a medical doctor, what advice can you offer to them today? Well, the first thing I would tell them, if they could get a mentor who would allow them to shadow them, that is very important because then that would give them some firsthand knowledge if they don't have a physician in their family and they don't know and they're interested, they can get to see the ins and outs of what a daily practice is like. And then just because they go to one doctor um, and they may not like it, you have to consider what specialty it was. Because, you know, in my specialty, I don't have to deal with a lot of blood and 
uh, the kind of specimens right. like that. And so, <laughs> right. you know, if you want a clean specialty, <laughs> pain management is clean. You follow me up. People think about dermatology, pretty skin right. or whatever. So you want to get someone you can shadow, but try to shadow more than one person and someone in a different specialty so you get a different uh, look at what you may want to do. And then that also serves good for you. So if you decide to apply to medical school, you have someone that can write a strong, strong recommendation for you. Excellent advice. Now, you and the believe. The thing I wanted to say if you uh, go to your college and your college has a pre med organization, you want to be a member of that because at the end, that advisor can write a recommendation for you when you go to medical school. I'm sorry, I want to add that. Yes, ma'am. Excellent advice. Now, you, Boo, we're going to get into our, our setting our goals and how important. Now, you believe setting goals is important because we are more likely to accomplish them. Talk to me about that. Well, research says that if you set a goal and write it down, you're more likely to do it than if you just have it in your head and don't write it down. Because as you know, a goal needs to you need to have a deadline for it rather than saying i want to go to medical school but you need to say when do you want to go because that's going to propel you to go on and take the chemistry you need to take go and take the physics and the biology so that you can have a deadline and we just know that when you write them down and have a deadline that's going to help you because you know we get busy in life and if you have a goal and a and a deadline with it It's going to help you to propel you past some of those distractions because otherwise you have distractions and you can keep pushing your goal in the background and procrastinate and not reach it. Now, we all have things we're good at, and your belief is that one can turn their experiences into bettering one's life. Speak to us about that. Well, I have something that we're going to talk about, I imagine, called the brag factor. And brag is my last name, as you know, B-R-A-G-G. So it's a five-step system. And the first step is behave as if. The second step is resist the urge to quit, complain. And the third step is accept no limitation. The fourth step is grow your gift. The last step is gratitude. And what you're talking about there, Dr. Haran, is the fourth step. It's when I say your gift. A lot of times people may have certain experiences or certain natural talents that I think it is important to um, work on those because they can propel us to a great future. I've had people who've come to my seminars, college students who majored, for instance, one young lady was majoring in marketing, but she wasn't moving forward. But when I looked at some of her experiences and some of her uh, hobbies that she had, She was a great artist, a graphic artist. So she ended up opening her own business, doing website development and things like that. So I think it is important that you can turn your experiences in to better in one's life. We know that you're a doctor. You're also a best-selling author. What is your inspiration behind all the work that you do? My inspiration is that I think in order for people to move forward, You have to have someone sometimes that you can ask for help or that it's important to me to reach back and help other people propel forward because I didn't make it on my own. I had very good mentors who helped me along the way and I want to be able to leave a legacy and my legacy will be that I helped other people to achieve their goals personally and professionally. So that's my inspiration. Wonderful. Now, for someone listening that may think, well, you're a doctor, so you have the resources to set a goal or even achieve them. What encouragement can you offer to those individuals that may be listening? Well, resources can be, I guess, you. I don't know if you mean financial resources right. or right. people resources mm-hmm. or what kind of resources were you uh, thinking of? Just the same, <laughs> especially yeah, financial, you know, financial resources. <laughs> yes. I had goals and set goals when I was that young person I told you in the backyard with a garden and I didn't have any money. When I went to medical school, I went to medical school on loans, so I didn't have any money. And what people don't know from medical school to your residency and all of those times, which takes up from college through med school and residency, was a 12-year span. 
And so I didn't have any money then. And yet I had goals. And so what I think is important is that sometimes you have to delay, have some delayed gratification. Sometimes, you know, I used to, uh, you may say, um, it looks like it today. <laughs> but I actually have a, uh, a beautician or a stylist, okay? Yeah. But back in the day, I did my own hair. Yeah. So there are certain things that you have to make delay going to the beauty shop or getting your nails done and your toes and do that pedicure and manicure yourself when you didn't have the financials. So I think that what is really important is to learn how to delay some of those gratification things so that you can move toward your goals because I didn't always have financial resources. And so I had to learn how to save pennies to make nickels, nickels to make dimes and, and that. But that's a philosophy that I still hold today. I still believe it is not what you make, it's what you keep. And that's what keeps me with my goals. Because I know where I came from and I know how easy it is to be without financial resources if you don't continue to work hard no matter where you are. Agreed. Have to make some sacrifices. You right. are listening to Rise on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Saren Heron, and today we're talking with Dr. Winifred Bragg, who obtained her undergraduate degree from the University of Alabama, her medical degree from Meharry Medical College, and completed her internship at Baptist Medical Centers in Birmingham. She completed her residency training at the University of Michigan, and she is a double board certified physician, CEO of Spine and Orthopedic Pain Center in Norfolk, Virginia, and also the creator of The Bragg Factor. She has written before part bestseller series on The Bragg Factor, which includes Dreams Without Goals or Nightmare, How to Create a Bragg Factor Book for a Competitive Job Market for College Students, and How how to Create a Bragg Book for a Competitive Job Market for Professionals, a nationally recognized speaker who also has appeared on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, and other platforms. She is here to talk about the importance of setting goals, share the Bragg Factor, and teach you to embrace your value. Now, Dr. Winifred, we've been talking and also, you speak to different companies to help um, them, you know, develop different professional goals. Talk to us about that. I speak to different companies to talk to them about the brag factor, because as you do a team, you want people to develop trust is one of the most important things uh, in having a team. And so they want me to come to talk to how to use the brag factor to develop camaraderie, how to set goals for uh, a company. You see, at the basis of everything I do, Dr. Ron, because I'm a pain doctor, I understand that there's more to pain than just physical pain. There's financial pain, career pain. Right. And so lots of times in a company, they may be having growing pain. Maybe they've hired so many people now that they don't have the managers for it. Or maybe they've outgrown the team and they don't have enough people to do what they need to do. So there's pains within a company as well. And I speak to them about strategies they can use to have reasonable goals for their team members, how they can keep the people motivated, and how important gratitude is important when you have a team to not only just tell them about the things that they did wrong, but to compliment. We know that if you <laughs> compliment a person, they're more likely to do something rather than I say, Sheila, you didn't do this and Sheila, you didn't do that. But to tell Sheila or Paul what they did that was good and to be able to say that in front of an audience, I tell people 10 seconds of bragging on some of your team members would do ever so much for you. I would have to agree as someone being in the healthcare industry myself. You know, now, right. <laughs> now you have a concept of nip or nap. Define that concept for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concept comes from when we talk about goals, I have four basic questions that I always tell people to ask when they're uh, doing their goals. What is it they really want? What is it they really want? And why do they want it? Because if you can really define what you really want, that'll propel you to stay on track during those times when you talked about it earlier, you're discouraged. So what is it you really want? What is your time frame? And number three is what's holding you back? 
And of the four questions, the other is what is your strategy? But of those four questions, the most important is what's holding you back? If you can look at, well, why am I not reaching my goals? Then what is it? And you can dive deep and do a deep dive on what's holding you back. You can achieve them. So nip and nap kind of defines we have two people. As you said, life gets busy. You know, you have family things you're doing and you're setting your goals. And you say, well, why can't I reach them? Well, if you got two different people, I say one person may be a napper. When they have a problem that comes along the way and they're not able to stay on path of reaching their goals, that person can become narrow-minded and get to say, I don't have any options. Right. And that's the N. They can become apathetic. And that's the A. They get a, a kind of a negative attitude. And the P stands for that napping person can get what we call a poor me syndrome. Poor me. Well, they didn't do this. They did this at right. me. And everything is personalized mm -hmm. and becomes about them. And when it becomes about them, they have what I call a pity party. <laughs> and when you have a pity party, what happens? You procrastinate. Of course. And when we procrastinate, we then pause. P-A-U-S. And when we pause... We kind of get on what I call the treadmill of life. And when you get on that treadmill of life, guess what? No matter how fast you're moving, you're going nowhere. So that's the concept of nap. When the person who is a napper sees an obstacle, instead of going at it, it just overwhelms them and they kind of nap and they kind of miss their goal. Whereas on the other hand, we have Dr. Huron and other people <laughs> who get an obstacle because we're all going to have obstacles right. and they kind of nip. And so when that person with a nip has a problem, they're going to navigate and say, let me look at the big picture here. What else can I do? And then the I in that stands for that person's inquisitive. They're going to seek other people out to ask questions. And this generation now, you know, is very good with the Internet. I stands for you become an internet lover because that means you're going to research. And then the P stands for they're going to have a plan for action. And ultimately, that person's going to nip it in the bud. That's why it's called nip. They're going to nip it in the bud and be able to move faster. And so the real question is, if you're a napper, how do you become a nipper? That's what you have to study and see. What makes you nap when the other person is nipping? I think a lot of it can be peer pressure. People coming by your desk, calling you on the phone and telling you that you are not good enough to do certain things. You can't achieve it. You don't have the money to do it. And that's when I think you hit the delete, delete button on your <laughs> mind and delete that person and then switch from napping to nipping. Have to change your mindset. Yes, ma'am. Change your mindset. Yeah. So many of us, as you know, we're brought up to not brag on ourselves. It's not good. What do you want to tell our listeners today about that? You're right. Most people are brought up to say bragging is bad, it's obnoxious, it's particularly minorities and women. We're thought that research says that we don't want to do any bragging. They even say that women uh, don't want to brag, and if a little girl makes Girl Scout and her friend doesn't, she gets emotion and feels real bad that her friend didn't make it. <laughs> but that boy said, I made Eagle Scout and somebody else didn't. But I just ask the listeners to think about it. I don't care where you've worked in life. Has anybody usually stopped by your desk and said, hey, can I give you a raise? <laughs> That's usually not the way it happens. That's not the way it happens. And so if you don't know how to brag or do some degree of self-promotion, you'll get passed by. And so what I say is not about bragging obnoxiously. You have to learn how to brag the right way. And that's why the fifth step in the brag factor is gratitude. And everything we want to do is from a state of gratitude. You know, before I got on this call, someone wrote me from a financial um, advisory company. And in the subject line, it said, we are honored. I'm like, what is this? This is somebody a finance, trying to be my financial advisor. Why are they writing, we are honored? And as I read the email, what it says, dear Dr. Bragg, we'd like to know if you need a financial advisor. And we are honored that we just won a certain award, 
among all other financial advisors. Now, wasn't that a nice way with gratitude to express the way that they're really bragging to let me know that their company is better than the rest mm-hmm. because they had won this award. So if you start looking at your emails now and look at things, everybody is doing some degree of bragging and you just and bragging is OK as long as you're doing it from fact and you have really done something because you need to be able to say something on the megaphone that's good about you. Agreed. You're listening to Rise on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Saren Heron, and today we're talking to Dr. Winifred Bragg, who obtained her undergraduate degree from the University of Alabama, her medical degree from Meharry Medical School, and completed her internship at the Baptist Medical Centers in Birmingham. She completed her residency training at the University of Michigan. She is a double board certified physician, CEO of Spine and Orthopedic Pain Center in Norfolk in Virginia, and the creator of The Bragg Factor. She has also written four part best selling series of The Bragg Factor, which includes Dreams Without Goals or a Nightmare, How to Create the Bragg Book for a Comp- competitive job market for college students and how to create a brag book for a competitive job market for professionalism professionals I'm sorry and a national recognized speaker who has appeared on ABC NBC CBS Fox and other platforms she is here to talk about the importance of setting goals share the brag factor and and teach you how to embrace your value now I have another question that listeners may be wondering um Dr. Winifred, you know, you mentioned about setting goals and most of us will have a goal. And after one week, we give up or we fall off course. What what advice do you want to say? Um, give to those listeners that may be wanting to, you know, start up again and try to achieve their goals. Well, I think it gets back to the nip and the nap where you are. You're napping. So sometimes what happens is you have to reevaluate your goals periodically. And was it realistic? Was the time frame that you put for that goal realistic that you could achieve it during that time period? But most importantly, I think that you have to be able to ask for help. When you see yourself feeling overwhelmed or having a problem reaching your goal, think about now who can help me? Who has done this before that has some experience or know-how in this area that may be able to give me a little tip? Because you see, speed does matter. And that's why it's important to have a good mentor or a good support group. So when you see yourself getting off track, you don't have to feel like you're swimming alone, that you have someone that you can ask. But most importantly is that was that goal realistic? And who do you have in your tribe that you can go to to help? And another thing, uh, Dr. Haran, it's important sometimes to have what we call an accountability partner. You know, you set a goal. Maybe you say you're going to the gym. Maybe you're going to walk. Maybe you're going to read uh, so many a chapter a night if you're a student or uh, do, uh, do the notes from the class today. Who in your class that you know is good, a good supportive person that can help you to keep that and keep you accountable and you keep them as accountable as well. And just as easy as writing them a text and saying, Sheila, how are you doing with your chemistry? Or Bob, do you think we need to meet tonight to study? How are, how are you coming along with that? You can easily write them a, a text. Wonderful advice. Now, you have written Dreams Without Goals or Nightmares. We won't get to all your books today. But, yes, ma'am. But what can readers expect from that book if they should purchase Dreams Without Goals or Nightmares? Well, it's going to do tell you the four most uh, important questions to ask yourself when you are setting a goal, it has worksheets in it that you can prioritize uh, your goals and keep up with what are some of your priorities that you need to do today. What are some personal goals and what projects that you are working on? I want people to know that there's a difference in a task and a goal. And it's going to talk about that a goal is something where you have to stretch. It's an ambitious thing that you're doing. Whereas a task is something that my to-do list for today. But it's going to tell you some different things to help you know where you need help and uh, what you can do to help and some action steps that you can take when you are writing down your goals and what to think about and tell you about how it's important to 
visualize yourself accomplishing the goal. For those on the line who you said are thinking about being a doctor, but don't think about it, but and just think about it, but close your eyes and visualize yourself being that doctor and see yourself doing it. And that's going to help you. You get that mental image when you get down and can't uh, seem to follow your goals. When you see yourself accomplishing it, that's going to give you a good mindset to keep you on track. And so the book talks about all of those kinds of things. Now, earlier we talked about it's okay to brag on yourself. So for those who may be listening and want to embrace their value and start bragging about themselves, like you said, in a meaningful way, who may not be professionals, who may not be doctors or nurses, um, what, or even have a college degree, how would you um, advise them to start even taking the first step to getting their self into such a position? In my book on the brag book, creating a brag book, it does address people who aren't professionals as well. I have folks who have a college degree and who don't have a college degree. And it teaches you how to write what I call your 30 second brag, which is your elevator pitch. And when you do that, you're going to write around three things that are important and unique about you. And when you think about those things, you may have to ask some of your friends, what's unique and powerful about me? Mm -hmm. And when you realize all the good traits that you have, whether you have a degree, a professional degree or not, that's going to empower you to be able to set your goals and see what the limits. You know, I am all an advocate for people getting a college degree. But, you know, there are many examples of millionaires who didn't go to college and they did quite well from a business <laughs> standpoint. Right. You just have to work hard. But college gives you a ticket that's going to propel you. But by no means am I saying that everyone to be successful have to have a college degree because there are countless examples of people who don't. But you just have to be innovative and work harder. So as we're getting ready to wrap up the show, Dr. Bragg, and those who really want to get in touch with you, how could they connect with you? You can email me at drbragg at thebraggfactor.com. I invite you also to subscribe to my YouTube. Every Tuesday, I do a tip for a terrific Tuesday on the Bragg Factor YouTube channel. So those are things that you can email me, Dr. Bragg at thebraggfactor.com. And you can also go to my YouTube station. And for any of my books, you can find them at Amazon. Well, thank you for being here, Dr. Winifred Bragg. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much, Dr. Haran. And I wish all of the listeners good luck, no matter where you are, college, professional, wherever. Just number one thing, know that you are good enough to have whatever it is that you think is your goal and you want to become. I'm Dr. Saren Heron, and it's important to write down your goals. It is a new year. Start today and make it a habit till you achieve. Start over again if you need to. Don't delay your dreams. Know your value. And it is okay to brag about yourself. You work hard. You achieve all you have with hard work and dedication. Rise up and chase your dreams. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of Rise, available wherever you listen to podcasts. And always right here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC.